Hi. Hey, welcome folks. We'll get started here in a little bit as more folks turn up. Hey guys. All right. Hey. Hey, so we'll get going here in just a second. Um, well, a couple minutes. We have a few minutes for folks to turn off. Um, we have just actually now hit the starting time of the meeting. Um, I. My psychology is screwed up with the fact that I now have to show up a few minutes early to start the meeting so that everyone else can join. So it always feels like uh, the, the meeting has been going for a while when it's actually just started. Oh, there's Frederick. Hello. Hello. Cool. So let's go ahead and dive in. Um, let me go ahead and share the issues board. Um, we can start there and, and see where we wind up. All right. So so I know I, I owe you a review on some of the further work you've done on the uh, server registry simplification stuff, Denise, because I know you've made some updates. Um, oh, yep. I have responded all uh, comments. Cool. And, uh, I still wait for uh, feedback. Excellent. I do apologize. I, I ended up being pulled in a bunch of different directions I didn't expect in the last couple of days. Um, OK, so. Um, the default policy examples. I know we've been merging a bunch of stuff related to that. That's actually turned out really well um, in terms of like how it's sort of shaping up. Um, I think there's one more that I'm aware of that's outstanding that's sort of requiring a rebase around some GoLang CI stuff. Oh, yep. Uh, also, uh, I'll prepare uh, two seconds policies uh, because of I have provided only two policies of your uh -huh. examples. Yep. Okay. Cool. Cool. Excellent. So that's moving forward nicely. Um, then we've got this bug that you've been looking at on interdomain NSC stuff. Oh, we have provided a simple uh, pull request for uh, mm -hmm. expand expanding uh, logs. And uh, I have asked the reporter to reproduce the problem with a new logging. Yep, nope, I, I see that. And, and we haven't heard back from them. So that's just what it is. Um, on the VL3, I know you've been extending that out with DNS. I, got, I took a quick glance over what you're doing with the DNS stuff. Um, and it, it's, it's interesting because you, you have this bias, which I really like towards trying to keep everything as distributed as possible. Um, there is a DNS protocol for allowing multiple servers serving the same domain to update each other with information. It may not be fully applicable to this problem space, but it's probably worth at least digging into um, to take a look at. Um, it was, it, I don't remember the name of it and I'll try and dig it up and, and send it to you. Um, it may be more oriented because DNS often thinks hierarchically towards how do you have multiple um, you know, DNS minions that are getting information from a single DNS master. But um, 
it may also allow us to actually essentially do zone exchange information using a native protocol for DNS between the VL3 NFCs. So worth definitely worth looking at, because if, if it does do what we need, it would be a very clean solution. Okay. Um, this is the sometimes unit tests. Um, this is the GoRoutine leak. I presume that we're still just monitoring this at this time? I wrote fix for it, but uh, it, um, it, it seems like it not covers all cases and the uh, bug still produces. Okay, so let, let's continue to see if we can figure out what's going on there. Um, intermittent yeah. bugs are the worst kind. Um, I, my, I, I'm second generation software. I'm a coder like my father before me. And one of the things my father taught me as a child was the worst thing code can ever do is run. <laughs> so things that, things that fail and fail, in, you know, fail fast, fail obviously, um, tend to be much easier to deal with. How is the WireGuard VPP plugin going? Uh, yeah. Uh, the last week I run ping using uh, WireGuard plugin. Uh, now mm -hmm. it's possible to connect two VPP instances using that. Um, it uh, seems to work correctly. I can ping each other. And uh, now I'm working at <clears throat> timers for uh, key freshing, for re handshaking automatically. Okay, excellent. So to make sure I understand, you're to the point where you can see sort of basic handshake happening with the standard WireGuard implementation. And you can see reasonable connectivity between two VPPs, but there are some timer things that you have to get right before we can see reasonable connectivity with a standard WireGuard implementation. Is that correct? Uh, uh, yes. I. I, I... <clears throat> Uh, see, um, I'm looking at uh, IQ2 plugin for IPsec. Mm -hmm. uh, it's plugin for uh, case in exchanging, uh, and I try to do it similarly. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So I, it, it sounds like you're making good progress. So that's excellent. Uh, thank you. Um, so I, I've, I've seen some pieces of things coming up. Um, yeah, I'm trying to put small <laughs> steps and I, I, I know I, again, I, I, giving too much of changes at once. <laughs> so I, I, I have the same problem, right? Um, I, I usually with the time I, you see me pushing a, p, a patch, I've made at least three really terrible messes of things and had to go and break them up into more logical chunks. Um, so I'm, I'm sympathetic, but it does make it enormously easier both to review and to sort of reason about what's happened in the past and, and to avoid various issues. Um, so, oh, did you see the um, piece about um, the, the revert from, of 265? Yeah, yeah, we discussed it with Denise already. Okay, cool. Um, you know, so basically, I think, I think, that, that the, the actual token stuff is being covered more or less correctly in update path. Um, yep. And um, without the, the security package. So that's, that's definitely there. Um, one other thing I will mention is, because it, it, it's probably something I'm going to be able to land in the next day or two, is that the, um, I, it, it turns out that the Spiffy v2 API makes it enormously easier to do something clean and simple. Um, than the Spiffy V1 API. Um, and so I'm going to probably be, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, landing something and I'll point you to it when it lands that uses that instead of using, um, it, it, instead of using the um, Spiffy V1 API stuff. So essentially, instead of using a TLS peer, it ends up using um, what's called a um, X509 source. Um, and it just ends up being a much cleaner API overall. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and, and so I'll get that, uh, that, that'll get pushed up. Um, and it, it'll simple, it'll, it'll be sort of another round of the world getting much simpler, um, which is always welcome. 
Yeah, sounds good. Cool. <clears throat> um, so I think you said you think you've got the metric stuff sorted out. Um, we're keeping this open just so that, because you sorted it out as far as it can go, and we'll we'll take a closer look when we're a little further along and, and see where we stand. Um, actually, I'm, I'm inclined to just close this if if you're comfortable with that. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Cool. Um, so I don't think we have any of the folks who are working on the kernel piece on this call right now, unless I'm mistaken. If you are working on the, the kernel forwarder, please speak up. Um, so the SRIO v forwarder stuff, I've seen some pieces pushing some initial SRIO v forwarder code. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're um, working in two directions. So Valeria is working on uh, forwarder uh, mm -hmm. initial parts and Sergey is working on a packet side to check all the stuff we need. So the guys mm -hmm. will start uh, pushing some chain elements uh, very uh, soon uh, to work with a real SRAV and so on. So oh, uh, I'll discuss in internally. We will start with um, implement implementing uh, some testing uh, EPUM like endpoint which will provide uh, virtual functions address and uh, before interdomain will be ready for new sdk we will be able to uh, check the srv example uh, with just this uh, way so That's... we will register endpoints uh, we will have mm -hmm. real srv forwarder and it will connect fantastic uh, and, and i know I've also seen Sergey interacting with the CNF testbed folks and uh, asking good questions about getting SROV stuff up in packet. Um, so is that is that continuing to go well from your perspective, Sergey? Um, thank you for introducing Michael and Taylor for, to me. Mm -hmm. uh, They're great guys. It's very helpful. Helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're 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 literally they're they're two of the nicest guys in in tech, frankly, um, and and so they're 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 wonderfully helpful, um, and they're also uh, sort of spread across time zones. I know uh, Michael's in Europe, and Taylor's in the U.S., but works a lot internationally, um, and so hopefully that that's a little helpful. I'm I'm sort of sensitive to the fact that you guys are sort of often skewed off of your native time zone. And I appreciate that very much, but anything that, that makes it easier is probably good. Um, and you do have access to Packet now? Yeah, yeah. Perfect, excellent. Um, standard, the standard comment I'll make on that is the, the Packet servers are being donated by Packet to CNCF and CNCF is gracious enough to make them available to us. And so by all means, keep servers up as long as you're doing useful things with them. Like you beat on a server and you, know, you keep it up for a week because you're actively working on it most days of that week. That's awesome. But do make sure when you sort of get to a point where you're done with a server that you, you delete it because we don't want to have servers hanging out forever. It, it's unkind to people who are being very generous with us. So, okay. Um, okay. So, we got some SRO V fits and then, okay, so those are, we've gone through those. The command forwarder piece, I'm, I've had some things land already. I'm continuing to sort of push some of that forward. Um, At one so, piece for forwarder, I think still uh -huh. is missing its uh, registration to NS manager. Oh, that's absolutely it's missing. still missing. It's absolutely okay. still missing. Um, no, you're, you're hundred percent correct. I, I'm, Part of the reason that I haven't quite done that yet is just just to be completely honest is that in order to bring it up to the point where I can test it end to end, um, I actually don't quite need to register it. Yeah, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, um, yeah, it's clear. And so, and the sort of like get something working, get the next thing working, it's sort of the last thing I need to get working. Um, still important, but the last piece. Uh, other quick question is now that you guys have had a little bit more time to look at the patterns there, um, what what do we what do we think we might improve there in terms of the patterns? I've adapted NS Manager, but it's still in my local repo. It sounds mm -hmm. good actually to move from uh, Corba to this new configuration with struct way. It's much easier, I think. 
Yeah, I, uh, I and in I general, don't... Mike's more more easy and more small and clean uh, application. Oh yeah, I I was super happy. The other thing that I realized that um, took me a long time to realize about EMV config is because they are able to use all these various interfaces like you know text on Marshall and binary on Marshall and whatnot. Um, most things we care about, we don't have to write unmarshallers for. They're just there. Yep. Um, so, and, and it was super funny because just before I, I pushed up that pattern, um, I literally had an entire raft of unmarshallers that I realized I had put a lot of effort into that I didn't need and that made me happy because um, I could get rid of them. The leading code is good for the soul. Um, Okay, that's good. And I know you had made a comment, which is absolutely true, that if you do end up using the local directory, that a lot of the sort of uh, build speed enhancements go straight to hell. Um, this is this is also true if you happen to use the debug uh, mechanism for debugging the application or debugging the testing. Uh, so if you happen to have any smart ideas that are sort of simple and elegant about improving that situation, I'd be very interested. Yeah, at the moment, uh, I've just installed the Spire and Spiffy locally to my Mac. Just start them and uh, use the environment variable locally <laughs> without using Docker and just do debug from EDE. Uh, well, it, it, it works well. Quite, quite, quite frankly, um, for the stuff you're doing with the network service manager, which basically is completely agnostic as to operating system, um, if you have the, the, the testing for the binary, actually start them and tear them down. Um, then you can probably just run go test um, and everything will be fine. Um, yeah, uh, actually we could try to adapt the approach uh, which I've used uh, mm -hmm. for Monorepo some time ago. Uh, it's, uh, it was for the uh, background actually uh, when I've uh, mounted the entire tree to the background mm -hmm. volume into the Docker, mm -hmm. into the Kubernetes port itself, and uh, started and restarted and compiled inside a real pod inside the Kubernetes. So it was most fast. Okay. No, I mean, that, that, that's, that's actually, that's an interesting approach. The, the real tricky part with that, is, as with anything, is how to make it very simple and elegant and close to existing patterns. Um, yeah. You know, you sort of seen, seen the evolution in public of like some, the hideous things that I did the first turn of the crank. And I think, I'd like to believe they've gotten better, um, but they were really ugly the first turn. Okay. So the OPA stuff is moving forward. The authorization cha monitor chain elements. I'm actually super happy how those are turning out, frankly. Uh, the authorization uh, monitor chain elements. One of the things I really like about the way they're sort of turning out is they aren't actually welded to OPA. Um, because we, while we definitely want to use OPA, you, you really don't want to sort of, you don't want to imbue some technology, even a technology as good as OPA or a technology as good as Spiffy, you don't want to have that running throughout your code if you can help it. Um, because you know, world, the world is strange and sometimes you're wrong. Um, which actually brings me to a question. I know I had a, I'd asked Denise this earlier. Um, in some of the OPA stuff, um, in, in the input, in addition to passing TLS info and passing um, the connection, we're parsing out separately the spiffy ID. And I was curious why. Oh, uh, it was implemented by Dmitry. I did not look yet why uh, he's implemented it. Okay, uh, I mean, it, it, the, the reason I was asking, and, and we should probably just ask Dimitri if he's, if he's around, is that um, I can't currently think of a reason why we would do that, and it does sort of produce a welding in the system, um, but that doesn't mean there isn't a reason. Um, the, yeah, the, uh, you know, lots of times uh, people think of really smart things that haven't occurred to me and that I can't see the reasoning for yet. Yeah, at, uh, at least uh, for the NS manager, I'm uh, using the Spiffy ID as identity for a client or endpoint because with single uh, entry point, like one gRPC server, it's impossible to distinguish different clients one from another. And so just one way is to use some identity from a certificate. 
Yeah. Let's, 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 so I actually had been thinking a similar sort of idea, quite frankly. Um, and, and, and so like, let's take a look at how we're doing that. Cause I think that's probably the right thing to do. We just want to make sure we do it in a way that has a light touch in terms of how it binds us to Spiffy, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. It's, I, I'm not bind to Spiffy itself. I just take the URL from the certificate. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not directly bind to the Spiffy. So okay. it would have different mechanisms which will extract the identity from the certificate. Mm -hmm. One is to use the URL bound to the certificate. Okay. Yeah, I know. I mean, there, there's, there, there's a lot of good ways to do it. And, and quite frankly, um, that's one of the, the ideas that, had, that I actually kind of liked because then you've got, then you're using a, a straightforward name for a thing. Um, so, okay. So that, that's, that's, that's definitely good. Um, <clears throat> all right. And then the go mod control playing V3 stuff. Okay, I actually need to go back and respond to that, that particular fellow. Um, the installation failure issue that we had here. Um, have we gotten Helm V3 in or is there some particular reason why not? Ooh, I think I forgot about it. We check it uh, and just, I think merge button need to be clicked. Okay, I think yeah, I, I mean, to something it, else. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, if, 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 you know, like I said, if there's actually a problem where we can't get Helm V3 working, that's fine. But if we can, we, we've actually had quite a few people who seem to want to use this with Helm V3. So it would probably be good to get that going. Yeah. You can just click the merge button and. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay. So it's it always, uh, yeah. So, I mean, if it's actually, yeah, I mean, I'm more than happy to merge it if you guys are saying it's actually in good shape. Um, I'm always a, I'm always a little bit leery with patches that are that are this old just because you know the presumption is there's some reason. So okay, that's merged. Um, yeah, if something will go wrong, we will prepare additional fix cool. for Monorepo. If it is. Yep. Okay. Awesome. So that's gone in. And so hopefully we'll get that closed here shortly. Awesome. Anything else that folks need before we sort of break? Because in about you know in a few minutes we should probably start heading over to start the other um, meeting. Oh, yep. I have one question. Uh, can you please open uh, advanced? Uh... OPA policies uh, issue. Sure. Uh, let's see. Advanced you OPA can policies. scroll up uh, in progress list. Ah, okay. Thank you. Advanced OPA policies. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, here I have one question related to single cluster SFC example. Uh, am I understand correctly that SFC it is just something like a chain of a manager, client, <laughs> forward there? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're, 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 you're completely correct. So this is one of those things where unfortunately sometimes the networking terminology bleeds in. So um, what we call composing network services together in a chain um, is, tr is very similar to a use case in networking that's often called service function chaining. Um, now we don't usually use that term uh, when we're talking to the public about this because while well, all the networking people go, aha, service function chaining, uh, everyone else goes, what? Um, because it doesn't mean anything to them and it's confusing. So, but yes, that's exactly it. It's, it's things like the Sarah story with um, a chain of things. Okay, uh, then a uh, second question. Uh, should we include in the chain uh, registries? In the chain registries? I, I, I'm, I don't something, quite follow. So, something like uh, client, uh, uh, did request to manager, manager did request to registry. Okay, so when you're saying, so the, the client sends a, a network service request or the client does a lookup of a service. 
Oh, yep. Uh, my point here is that uh, a manager uh, did a request to its local uh, registry. And my question is, should we um, include this registry in the SVC? Uh, well, so that the or as oh, I say, so the, it's also it's only yeah, so the, 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 this is an interesting. So typically speaking, the the, the network service chain that you're dealing the net, when you're dealing with a, a comp composition of this sort. So th this is a what you're asking is actually a very subtly intelligent question, um, because traditionally when you have a chain where you, for example, had a client and then a VPN or in a firewall and then a VPN, um, then you know essentially. What you have in the middle there that we never talk about are things like the network service managers, right? Which are part of the path, but we don't sort of logically talk about as being part of the chain usually. Um, let's let's take this offline and chat a little bit over uh, text after the meetings, because I, I think you're thinking about a, thinking about things in a very smart way. But I don't, but which makes me reluctant to give you too fast an answer, because. Um, the way I think about the world, no, you would not actually have the registry as part of the SFC chain. But that may actually be a misleading answer because you're probably not thinking about it quite the way I do, but it sounds as if you're thinking about it in a very smart way. So I want to understand your thinking better. Um, cool. So we are, we are now about five minutes out from the meeting at the top of the hour. Um, yeah. Is uh, there anything else before we break for that? Uh, I'm a minute of... Uh... Funny. Sure. Uh, you can open a link in the chat. It's very mm -hmm. funny message why build is failed after we merged with Helm. <laughs> uh, let me see. Hang on. Oh, so test sanity check is failing. Could somebody please get on that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just because uh, the euro is different. So, guy, we download it from. Very sorry for our builds failed. <laughs> oh, oh, so yeah, just, just getting the shell check going. Okay, <laughs> so, all right. Cool. All right, anything else before we, we bounce? Nope. All right, talk to you later. Well, talk to you in two minutes, basically. Yep, see you.